And the first project we launched, it's, I don't know, in 2017 or around there, was to welcome refugee students. Great. And that was just to welcome them in our uh, normal courses as uh, guest students. They don't get a degree, they don't have to prove anything, they just can come for free. And it was sort of easy because uh, I'm in charge of the international programs and we have an international program in English for exchange students, for the Erasmus students mainly. Mm -hmm. So that program is fully in English. So uh, refugees who didn't speak French could come to the English program. Perfect. So we have them coming to both. You know, more of them coming to the English program because it's easier for them often to follow what's going on. So they come and they join whatever they'd like, you know, we have a person in charge of them, they come and with them, we look at the schedule, what is possible, what will be interesting for them, and we try to adapt to their needs. It's often a difficulty, the difficulty is because they don't live in Brussels, they live in refugee centres, yeah. which are outside Brussels, so we have had to find fundings because we help them to pay their train tickets. Because if we didn't give any funding, they wouldn't come. So that's the help we have been uh, able to structure us, is to pay for the train ticket to come. And we try to give, yeah, to open the lessons, you know, the days that are suitable for them. Mm -hmm. And for the ones who want to uh, pass the exams, we are, they're free to do it. Either they do or they don't. And if they do practical course, we media schools, so we also have some TV calls, some radio calls. If, if they want to do those, they can do the practical exercise and if they succeed we give them a certificate so a proper certificate with the ECTS on it which for them could be used if later on in their past they manage to get onto a graduate uh, program they could use their ECTS or we hope they could and at least it's a piece of paper that's usually you know proof they've been also to try to get uh, the refugee status when they are uh, seeking for it, it proves mm -hmm. they've been trying. So oh, the has uh, been working well and successfully and we've had you know about 15 students each semester and um, it, it was really good. It had to stop. I mean, we haven't done it this semester because too much was given online and the refugees, where they stay in the camps, they don't have access to a computer or yeah. connection. We try to work out a system to maybe uh, lend them computers for next semester because now we're seeing that maybe we will be online again. The organization of including the students in our courses is nothing special really. We try to have them being as normal student as possible. It's you know, from the point of view of them in, uh, being included in a class, we try to make it look like they're just among the other students. Of course, they're not. So we warn the teacher that there will be uh, a student coming from outside. First of all, because it, the student won't have the same background as the other, won't have the other class, will be in a different path. So it's important for the teacher to know. The student doesn't have any obligation. Also, we uh, explain to the teacher where the student live because sometimes, you know, if they need to do some research or some, I don't know, video work, you know, if they are in a camp in a special uh, place, you know, the teacher might adapt the request to that. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of contact with the teachers to prepare okay. them, to prepare the students. Uh, well, we have an individual appointment with them when they apply to assess the possibility to answer their need, you know, will, do we have courses that are interesting to them? Do we have uh, a timetable that's possible for them? Because sometimes students, we've had students who, who take nearly three hours to arrive to Brussels, you know, because they'd be far away from the station, there was only a few buses to it. So they take a really, really long time. So we need to find out in the program they want, do not start at 8.30 in the morning, because in which case it wouldn't be possible. So we adapt to that as well. And uh, we find out the system are to help them to pay their journey if they need to have a train ticket to come. And we also try, I mean, depending on where they live and how it happens, um, some organization, a lot of them come from Red Cross um, housing and they don't always, you know, everything is paid for if they live in the, um, 
with the Red Cross. But if they go away for the day, sometimes they don't even get money to buy themselves a sandwich. So we try to understand and assess what uh, the needs are to be able, if needed, to supply a little bit more. Last year we had uh, the possibility to give to some to some of them, you know, sandwiches uh, at lunch or things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's that little logistic structure that we do. And then we have an open office where they can come if they need uh, help. One of my uh, colleagues is in charge of them. It's a colleague who's worked for four years in a Red Cross camp before working in the international office. So it's just perfect. And he married a woman from Iraq. He knows exactly you know, the situation. So it's just a perfect person for that. But apart from that, and we also uh, write specific certificates at the end of their semester because that's something that do not exist for our own students. So we've uh, organized the logistic for that. And uh, we've had a chance that several of the students who have gone through uh, the certificate with us have after that applied to be normal students. And uh, they've managed, one of them has uh, a full registration. He had the paper, like, uh, luckily enough, he had the proof that he had done study before, so he's a full-time registered student. Some of the ones we try to help them, guide them to uh, find out to become student, which is terribly difficult, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have much uh, expectation that most of them could come as full-time students, but they go away with a certificate. And then we do a survey. When they leave, we try to do a satisfactory survey to see what went wrong and how to uh, improve it again. We always have um, a difficulty on how to talk about it because we don't want to stigmatize them. And that's something we must have faced with other projects. So I would love to be able to say to all our students, we have refugees amongst you, you know, welcome them. They're having a difficult time. Please be nice to them. But if you do that, you just stigmatize them and um, it's not what they want. So at this stage, we've decided to try try not to identify them. We call them international students. So all uh, local students think they are exchange students or if they talk to them, they will know they're not, but um, we try not to make any difference. So the, those uh, refugee students are called IEX Solidaire. In French, uh, it's solidarity students. Yeah, yeah the strength is clearly as you see, it has an impact. And the impact is at different level. I mean, the student coming, you know, even on me, it has an impact, you know, on anybody coming, you know, we were uh, very amazed because the student was the first project we did. And, you know, you think you'd get refugee students, you think you'd have students. And we had adults with a real life, you know, that woof when you have that person sitting opposite your desk is something else than when you have it on TV, you know. So meeting those people uh, and seeing them, how much they want to do, how much, you know, they're ready to do anything. I told you, some do three hours to come to follow one lecture, you know, which is not even so interesting, you know. <laughs> you know, and for them, it's so important. For them, it's a life saving. You know, really uh, meeting those people is, amazing so it's a strength that i know you know if it has that effect on me it has it on you know the other one as well you know people sitting in the classroom next to them you know have to have you know an improvement on their view on refugees but also you know they view on themselves they view on our system i don't know i mean you want to change everything you know when you meet them you think our system is just so far away from being right you know there's so much to be done and i think hopefully those little initiatives will lead to bigger ones. That's anyway my hope that, you know, if you meet a person who has, you know, a story to tell you that is, you know, something he's gone through, it's not, you can't stay not touched by it. So it's not going to have no effect. It has effect. So yeah, it's very powerful impact at human level on us, on our students, on our teachers, our colleagues who have had those students as students or teachers as colleagues. And I think on the people who have come here, you know, I have the, one of the students, in a woman who came last year, she did the two semesters. 
second semester was a little bit, you know, they had to stop because the, the school closed in uh, March. So she came back and, um, and begged us to come again this year because, oh. you know, it was giving a meaning to our life and it really was, I think, making a difference for her.